Hi everybody, I'm John Van Eel. I'm down here at our Mueller Field Station and I'd like to talk to you about some tracks today. You know, when I first got into tracking, I tried to do it as a self-taught sort of endeavor. And I just took that term literally. I thought identifying tracks meant that you would find a track and just stare at it until you could magically figure out what the animal was. But when I started taking classes from professional trackers, I learned that many of them look at a trail pattern first before they look at individual tracks. And I've got that over here to my, to my left. If you want to look behind me here, we've got this nice pattern of an animal that actually moved from the, the brush towards the camera here. And if I look at the pattern of the tracks that got laid down, I can identify this animal before I even go and look at individual footfalls. We're looking at an animal that was in a gate called a bound. So gate is the term that we use to, uh, to talk about the, the way the animal put its feet on the ground. And a bound is defined as an animal that is moving in a way that both of its hind feet land at the same time. So the two tracks that are next to each other side by side, those are the hinds. And the two tracks that are offset from each other, those are the fronts. And I did say that this animal was walking towards me. So when we look at this, I'll give you the direction of travel. When we look at this, you can see that the two fronts landed. And then the hinds landed in front of the fronts. So for a minute, this animal looked like a little pretzel. It literally, the two front feet landed, and then the whole back end came in front of that. The two hinds landed, and then it bounded into its next, uh, its next uh, set. This is an eastern cottontail, or a rabbit. And most people call what rabbits do hopping, but a tracker would call it a bound. I brought with me today a ruler that I have that's a special, uh, special ruler for tracking so that you can put it at a 90 degree angle and you can get a, a measurement. If it's an individual track, you get the length and the width, or if it's a set of tracks like these, you can get the stride and the, and the straddle. So if I take it here and set it down, you can see that we're talking about a width of this trail as being about four and a half inches. And the length of this uh, set of four tracks is about eight or nine inches. Hey, there's an extra present here. We've got, we've got all four of the tracks. So you've got the two fronts and then the two hinds. And then there's a, a dropping here. So this helped confirm what we already thought, that this was an eastern cottontail. Rabbit droppings uh, are, tend to be round like that, but flattened, almost like the world's worst Skittles flavor. <clears throat> they also come individually. So white-tailed deer... Uh, poop like a slot machine just all at once rabbits poop like a pez dispenser one at a time so if you're finding more than one pellet it means that the rabbit uh, spent a little bit more time there so we, this is very typical having one one like that i i noticed that the rabbit came up to here paused and then made its way back and right here the snow is much crustier so the rabbit sat right on top of the snow, and you can start to see some of the individual toes that are in there. It's difficult in rabbit tracks to find individual toes because their feet are so fully furred. But when you do get them, they're just absolutely beautiful. So there's a, there's a toe, there's a toe, there's a toe. And then on the next track in front of us here, you can see individual toe prints as well. Rabbits are not our only bounder. Another common bounder is a squirrel, but many of our rodents are bounders, and I'd like to show you some tracks over here as well. So, so this is a track that probably would have confused me just a few years ago. Uh, we're not looking at one individual print here with four toes. We're actually looking at all four feet of an animal here. This is a paramiscus mouse. Paramiscus is the name of the genus. Most people would call this a, a deer mouse. Here are the two front tracks and then the two rears. So you've got the two fronts 
and the two rears there <laughs> and my little fingerprint there. Mm -hmm. And this animal came from the snow here and moved in this direction. And you can see, alley pans out there. This is how far this animal was able to jump about a, about a foot, maybe a good 10 inches um, from one footfall uh, to the next grouping there. I get this one as a confusing one for a lot of people because they, they mistake the individual feet as individual toes. So they think they're looking at an animal with four toes that, that walked here. I have another set of these, probably the same, same mouse family, and I found these earlier. And they're just a little clearer. They present themselves a little, little bit differently. And you can see that where my finger is right there all four of the individual footfalls. The two that are closer together are the fronts. The two that are farther apart are the hinds. So we know in this case, the direction of travel was that way. Hey, thanks for joining us. That was a quick lesson in some of our common boundaries that we have here in the Finger Lakes.